the fighting rage through jungles, across rubber plantations. While I was in nurses' training, the, uh, the war in Vietnam was a very far away place. During my training, we received visits from several recruiting officers. They needed to find nurses to fill the slots in Vietnam, in the hospitals in Vietnam. And I thought, well, you know, how bad could Vietnam be for nurses? We worked in the hospital. In 1969, I got a call and found that I had orders for Vietnam. And I remember, uh, you know, my mother being so upset about it and my father saying, June, what did you expect? There's a war and she's in the military. What did you expect? We landed uh, down near Saigon and um, got ready to disembark from the plane. Off to the side were all the guys who were gonna get on the plane I just got off of. They were screaming, crying. They were stripping their clothes off. They were in ecstasy that they were leaving. And that was the first time I became afraid. Surgical intensive care was um, a very hectic place. There were times they were coming in so fast, nobody was really sure what the name of the patient was. Emergency rooms here in this country never could have prepared us for what we saw. That never leaves you. You know, in a situation like war, uh, you have to find an outlet for something. Um, you can't live inside those emotions all the time without having some kind of an escape. So when people partied, they partied hard. It was a way of releasing, you know, a lot of the tension and the stress um, that we experienced, and uh, it was a way of protecting ourselves. I made a lot of good friends there. We were sharing life and death together and crying together, trying to survive together. And um, those are emotions and experiences that tie you together for life. I was a real good nurse and I knew what I was doing and I did a good job. And I had a uh, corpsman, obviously, that served with me on the unit. We respected each other, and we had a very good working relationship. The guys that I served with were very protective, but I wasn't real sure of it when I left my compound because it's pretty overwhelming to leave home, so to speak, and go out in the town, and you're the only woman, and there are 10,000 guys around you. There was a lot of sexual tension. Uh, we were the only, what they used to call, round eyes around. I look at the time in Vietnam and I can't say, oh yeah, this day was bad. They were all bad days. Certainly as a nurse you help people, but I look back on my life and I think, all oh, that whole year I had been in Vietnam, how many lives did what I did affect, you know? It's a very good feeling to know that in the end, you feel like you've given something of your life. You know, I can be proud, I think. My children can be proud. When I came home was in 1970, so I was 23 years old. You lived a life over there that was totally different from here. I hadn't driven in a year. Uh, I hadn't eaten off plates. It, it was just different, and I spent a lot of time in my room actually isolated from the rest of the family. You can't know what it's like. You really don't want to know what it's like. You can never comprehend what it's like. And so why should I waste my time? Done. Didn't really talk about it anymore. I 
I had the opportunity, though, to go back to Vietnam twice now since I left. And the minute I saw Vietnam, it was like everything exploded. It was all in color again. And the thing that startled me most was the words that popped into my head. The first words that floated through my mind when I saw that was, I'm home. I became an adult there. I became, in a lot of ways, who I am today there. And it was like going home. Yes, I'd do it again, without doubt, without question. It was, in some ways, the most remarkable year of my life. When you get down to the humanity of war, war is war is war. It's dirty, it's painful, it's scary. There's human lives lost, there's blood. To know those things is never gonna change. And that's one thing that's shared by anyone who served in the military. And when somebody says they were in a war, no matter what, we know we're connected.